China has been using its economic power to coerce and intimidate other countries that disagree with its policies or criticize its human rights record. One of the main tools that China has employed is trade blockades, tariffs and boycotts, which aim to inflict economic damage and isolate the target countries from regional and global markets. One of the most prominent examples of China's economic bullying is its ongoing trade war with Australia, which started in 2020 after Australia called for an independent inquiry into the origins of COVID-19. Since then, China has imposed a series of punitive measures on Australian exports, such as coal, wine, barley, beef, lobster and cotton, either by imposing high tariffs imposing strict inspections or outright bans. These measures have cost Australia billions of dollars in lost revenue and disrupted its supply chains. China has also launched a propaganda campaign against Australia, accusing it of being a lapdog of the US and interfering in China's internal affairs. Another example of China's economic coercion is its response to South Korea's decision to deploy a U.S.-backed missile defense system in 2017. China viewed the system as a threat to its security and retaliated by imposing unofficial sanctions on South Korean businesses and cultural products. China lashed out at Korea by promoting government-sanctioned trade boycotts, blocking online trade of South Korean products, and shutting down South Korean retail facilities. China also discouraged Chinese tourists from visiting South Korea, resulting in a sharp drop in tourism revenue for Seoul. A third example of China's economic pressure is its treatment of Japan over various territorial and historical disputes. China has repeatedly used trade restrictions as a way to express its displeasure with Japan's actions or statements on issues such as the Senkaku slash Diaoyu Islands the Yasukuni Shrine, or the Comfort Women. For instance, in 2010, China halted exports of rare earth metals to Japan after a Chinese fishing boat collided with a Japanese Coast Guard vessel near the disputed islands. In 2012, China imposed import bans on some Japanese products and encouraged anti-Japanese protests and boycotts after Japan nationalized some of the islands. In 2021, China suspended issuing new visas for Japanese and South Koreans after they imposed COVID-19 testing requirements on travelers from China. These examples show how China has used trade blockades, tariffs, and boycotts to pressure countries like Australia, Japan, and South Korea into political concessions or silence on human rights issues. However, these tactics have also backfired on China in some ways. They have provoked resentment and resistance from the target countries who have sought to diversify their trade partners and strengthen their alliances with other democracies. They have also damaged China's reputation as a reliable and responsible trading partner and exposed its vulnerability to global supply chains. In fact, some of the countries that have been targeted by China have joined a new regional trade bloc called the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCP, which includes 10 Southeast Asian countries as well as South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. The RCP is seen as an extension of China's influence in the region, but it also offers an opportunity for cooperation and dialogue among its members. Therefore, while China may have achieved some short-term gains from its economic bullying, it may also have undermined its long-term interests and stability in the region. The U.S. and its allies have responded to China's economic bullying by imposing sanctions on Chinese officials and entities for their human rights violations in Xinjiang and Hong Kong, and by strengthening their security and economic ties in the Indo-Pacific region. In Xinjiang, China has been accused of committing genocide against the Uyghur Muslims and other ethnic minorities who face mass detention, forced labor, sterilization, and cultural destruction. According to the U.S. government, more than one million Uyghurs are currently detained in internment camps. 
In Hong Kong, China has undermined the autonomy and freedoms of the former British colony by imposing a national security law that criminalizes dissent and erodes the rule of law. The U.S. has imposed sanctions on several Chinese officials and entities responsible for these abuses, including the Xinjiang Production and Construction Corps, a paramilitary organization that controls much of the region's economy. The U.S. has also added Chinese artificial intelligence companies since time to an investment blacklist, accusing it of developing facial recognition programs that can target ethnic minorities. The U.S. has not acted alone. It has coordinated its sanctions with allies such as the European Union, Canada, and the United Kingdom, who have also imposed similar measures on Chinese officials and entities involved in human rights violations in Xinjiang. These sanctions send a message that democracies around the world will not tolerate China's repression and coercion. The U.S. and its allies have also taken steps to enhance their security and economic cooperation in the Indo-Pacific region, a strategic area where China seeks to expand its influence and challenge the rules-based order. The U.S. has reaffirmed its commitment to defend its allies Japan, South Korea, Australia, and the Philippines from any Chinese aggression. The U.S. has also joined Australia, India, and Japan in the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or QUAD, a forum for dialogue and cooperation on regional issues such as maritime security, infrastructure, climate change, and COVID-19 response. The U.S. and its allies have also pursued trade and investment initiatives that promote free and fair trade, respect for labor and environmental standards, and digital innovation. The U.S. has expressed interest in joining the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership CPTPP, a trade pact among 11 countries that excludes China. The U.S. has also launched a new partnership with Japan and India to support infrastructure development in the Indo-Pacific region. By imposing sanctions on China for its human rights abuses and by strengthening their alliances in the Indo-Pacific region, the U.S. and its allies have shown that they are willing to stand up to China's economic bullying and defend their shared values and interests.